Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another Unmissable Update news video. The title of the series changes every time. It's evolving. Now, about a week ago on the 14th of March, an audio interview over an hour long with Todd Howard was released, in which there's lots of cool, interesting, and personal things that he tells about himself and his gaming career, but he also gives us some new information or confirmed information from which we can deduce and figure out some pretty interesting things. Before we get into it, I would suggest that you definitely check out this interview. It's super interesting. Most interviews with Todd Howard are on paper or are, you know, nine minute videos. But this is one hour and a couple of minutes of straight audio with Todd Howard. So it feels very raw and honest. And again, it's pretty damn interesting. The interview is part of the AIAS Game Makers Notebook, which is a podcast hosted by Ted Price, who is a board member of the Academy of Interactive Arts and Sciences and the founder and CEO of Insomniac Games. I'll put a link in the description to the full interview view, which again, I suggest you check out because it's quite interesting. But for this video, we're going to be dissecting the meat, butchering it into delicious steaks. Now this isn't necessarily in the order of how it goes down in the podcast, but I feel like it makes more sense in this order for a video. So while they're talking about how the studio has grown and if it's difficult to communicate between not only the large team in the Rockville's main studio, but also in the Montreal studio, and Todd Howard had this to say. We have the main group in Rockville, we have the studio in Montreal, we work with other parts of Zenimax. Escalation was a studio, and there's other people throughout the larger Bethesda, Softworks that is, that are working on our games. So it's over 300 full time now, which is unique for us. All right, so this was clearly before Bethesda Austin was announced, but in that bit there where he says, and there's other people throughout the larger Bethesda that's working on our games, I would imagine that he was referencing Battlecry Studios, which at the time would have secretly been Bethesda Austin. And again, at this time hadn't been announced, therefore he didn't just come out and say it. But what's really relieving to me, I suppose, is that he has confirmed a number of employees at Bethesda Game Studios now which was over 300 full-time staff. Now, the reason this is so good is because a game like Assassin's Creed has roughly 1,700 people working on it, but games like Oblivion, Skyrim, and Fallout 4 had 100 people working on them, 100. So while that's one, very impressive, two, it's like, can you please hire some more people? And guess what? They have, they've tripled their staff size since Fallout 4. And this is the first big expanding of Bethesda Game Studios ever since they went from about 30 people in Morrowind to about 80 people in Oblivion. Again, Skyrim was then 100, Fallout 4 was about 100, but now it's just taking off massively and they've got over 300 full-time staff. This doesn't necessarily mean that we'll be getting more games faster, because as we move further and further into the future, the standard of games increases and the amount of work increases with that standard. So you might be thinking, well, why is it good then if they have 300 people now? Well, I'll tell you what, 300 people working on a really high standard game is a lot better than 100 people working on a really high standard game. So that is great news and an excellent confirmation, finally, of an actual number that we get to work with. Okay, so now combined with this interview and information we already have on Bethesda Austin, we know that they have over 300 full-time staff and there's also Bethesda Maryland, Bethesda Montreal, and Bethesda Austin. So there's three different studios, all under Bethesda Game Studios. So a lot of people are thinking, okay, so the main studio in Maryland is working on, you know, the new Starfield or the new Fallout or whatever. Then the Montreal guys are doing like mobile stuff. And then the Austin team's doing maybe VR stuff, who knows? My point is a lot of people have speculated that the different sub studios within Bethesda Game Studios are doing different bits and bobs. But check this out, as when Todd was asked about the different studios and managing that many people and who works on which games when, this is what he had to say. And that's one of the things where we've never had multiple teams. Well, back at Bethesda long ago we did and it didn't go well. We got very different cultures on different teams. This was after Daggerfall, which was The Elder Scrolls 2. We made a bunch of games and the main team got split up. I was doing Red Guard, and we had Battle Spire, we did a 10th Planet game that was cancelled, which was a sci-fi thing, which just goes to show that they're interested in making sci-fi games. <coughs> Starfield. We had Morrowind started and stopped multiple times. You know, the company was not in good straits. It really hurt the company. We were probably going to burn ourselves down. 
This was after Daggerfall and right before Morrowind, as we know Morrowind. We probably had three or four teams, but they were very separate. I was in charge of one, and there were people in charge of the others. And the company was about to go out of business. We all rallied around Morrowind and decided we need to be one team. We had also become very small. Then eventually, the larger company became Zenimax Media, where we had capital and can invest in it. Ever since then, I took this lesson. We may do multiple things, but we will not be multiple teams. The editors we use and the tools and the core systems go between our projects so that people can move. Like if you're a level designer, you know that yes, I work on all of this stuff. I'm not on the Elder Scrolls team or the Fallout team. I'm part of Bethesda Game Studios and I will work on all of it. Mobile is a little bit separate, but we'll still pull people onto it. You know, we'll pull an artist off of Fallout 4 to work on Fallout Shelter or a designer. So we have people who focus more, but they all expect that they can and will touch anything and everything. All right, so this might realize some people's dreams and also crush some people's dreams. For example, some people were like, okay, Bethesda Austin has opened up, so now they can work on a new Fallout game while Bethesda Maryland works on whatever new thing they're doing. Or Bethesda Austin can make an Oblivion remaster while Bethesda Maryland does this and that. Which would have been fine, but as Todd said there, he's not going to split up the teams. He's not going to have this team and that team. They're all one team, and as one team, they're all kind of working on multiple things at once. But there's always one major project in production. So for the most part, between the three studios, everyone's doing the one project. And personally, I would prefer 300 people focusing on one thing than 100 people focusing on one thing and then another 100 people focusing on another thing and then another 100 people focusing on another thing. I'm sure the staff sizes aren't split equally between the three, but you know what I mean. I'll prefer the majority of those 300 minds come together and create something big and special and powerful. We have Todd talking in a roundabout way about the engine. Basically, he was asked about systems within their game and he had this to say. You know, take an animation system change that we're doing right now or finishing for one of our projects. Though that's a project that's in pre-production, getting a new animation system, engine. Whereas the project that's in full production is using the old one, but that fuels them. The animators who are in production are commenting on the animation system in pre-production and they're getting excited. You know, hey, I'm going to get to use that when that project rolls onto production. So while he was talking about animators and their reactions about the new animation system, if you look a bit closer, he's saying that the game they're finishing up now is on the old engine. And once the current game is done and probably announced at E3 this year, then the second new project they have, once that rolls into full production, it's going to be using a new engine. Now, personally, I don't care what engine they use. The engine that they have used in Skyrim and Fallout 4 is exactly the engine they need to make the kind of games they make. So while a very common thing is, oh, they need to get a new engine, that's uh, easier said than done. And secondly, not really. I mean, if they do, that's great. But it's definitely not the end of the world if they don't. Again, the engine they've been using is exactly the engine they need. And if they can get a bigger, better one, fantastic. But if not, yeah, I get it. Creating an engine that can sustain the games they make no one else does that. They're using the best one there is for what they do. Now, with all of that said, Todd did say that the project they're finishing up now, again, I'm 100% certain Bethesda Game Studios will announce a new game at Bethesda's showcase this year at E3. So Todd saying that they're finishing up a game doesn't surprise me. That falls into my theory perfectly. And finally, when Todd was asked about what kind of other genres he would like to work on besides, say, fantasy with Elder Scrolls and post-apocalyptic with Fallout, he had this to say. We have... well, I don't want to say. We made a list of the things we'd like to do one day. Post-apocalypse was once on that list, and then we acquired Fallout. But there's other things on that list. That's what I would say. Where some of those... We're investigating. You know, we'd like to try some new things. Though we love the world of Elder Scrolls and Fallout as well. And they're ones we're not going to leave behind. Alright, so... The Elder Scrolls is fantasy, Fallout's post-apocalyptic. The only other real massive contrasting one I can think of is sci-fi. Of course, there's the rumors of Starfield. And earlier when Todd Howe was talking about uh, cancelled games, he said Tenth Planet, which was a sci-fi game. So Starfield is of course rumored to be a sci-fi game. They've got a fantasy IP. They've got a post-apocalyptic IP. They don't have a sci-fi IP. So the whole sci-fi game coming out Starfield is more and more likely. 
it's all fitting together. That doesn't mean it's true, but it's definitely got a lot of evidence pointing towards it. Now, as we know before the Elder Scrolls 6, there's two new big projects, like the kind of projects they're known for. Not mobile games, but big open world things. There's two of them. In a few interviews here and there between Todd Howard and Pete Hines, we've gotten the pretty much confirmation that both of them are in new IPs. So the two new games that are coming up before the Elder Scrolls 6 aren't Elder Scrolls and aren't Fallout. So as Todd said there, there's a list of things they'd like to try. And as he said there, some of them we're investigating. So you've got a fantasy IP. At the top of his list was post-apocalypse. Then they acquired Fallout. Now they have a post-apocalyptic IP. So it's kind of like, what else is on that list? Sci-fi again. And then apart from that, I can't really think of anything unless you wanted to do something historical, but I don't think so. As in this very interview, Todd was going on saying he likes Black Mirror and he likes worlds where you don't exactly know what the rules are and they're not exactly real. So that is interesting. I do not know what the other IPs are. Of course, there is the ultra rumor that one of them is Starfield, which is an open world sci-fi, open world sci-fi game. But apart from that, that concludes the interview or at least the meat or the breaking news meet. So all in all, a pretty interesting interview and while no major bombshells were dropped, again, I would suggest that you go and actually listen to the interview. It's very interesting. And I do believe it's like the only just uncut raw hour of Todd Howard out there. So again, a link to that is down in the description and be sure to check it out. So be sure to let me know what your thoughts are on this and all of the stuff that Todd talked about in this video. Or if you've listened to the podcast, leave a comment with your thoughts on the thing as an entirety or any specific points you'd like to talk about. So with that said, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there soon.